Hello everyone, this is uh, the Universe Studios. Welcome to another episode of Android Programming. We'll be talking vividly on the floating window, you know, how to incorporate a floating window into your Android application. How was the floating window? Probably you might have been seeing it in uh, latest applications whereby uh, uh, a pop-up comes up from uh, a main activity or from a major uh, uh, application and it gets uh, a smaller view on the UI of the uh, mobile application. Uh, you can find that on uh, on Facebook or uh, Messenger where you have a floating uh, style of uh, pop-up. But this is uh, much uh, basic, you know, it's not going to be comprehensive like uh, major applications we have out there, but it's like a startup to how to incorporate a floating window into your mobile application. All right, I'm going to take it through on a high level step of how to actually uh, get that rolling. Okay, I'll be using Android Studio as my development environment. Okay, we'll talk about uh, the UI of the application, which is the layout. We have um, just a layout uh, file here, which is main.xml, and also we'll be talking about uh, the anim, uh, that's the animation. Uh, folder which is the animation directory where we have the activity slide down and the activity slide up all right first of all let's talk about the main.xml which is the main uh, layout of this application okay actually a linear layout you know with an orientation of vertical the layout with tonight is still parent uh there is a linear layout uh child in the uh parent layout which is uh, uh the orientation is vertical as well by the layout width and height is few parent and wrap content respectively. It has the layout width of one and the graphic is center. That's where we have the button you know, to switch to the window, to switch to the uh, to the floating window. So the button with an ID with the switch modes, the layer graffiti, width, height, wrap content, while the text on the button is switched to window. Okay, we have a closing media of tag. Uh, we have an edit text right after it which actually uh, uh, accepts a uh, typed uh, uh, message you no know? we assign an id to it which is text box okay just like a text box we have in, uh, in basic uh, word uh, processing okay the layout width and height is match parents and wrap content respectively okay let's talk about the anime the anim, uh, animation directory we have the activity slider all right, uh, this sets the XML NS Android, you know, what we call about HTTP scammers Android.com. Okay, we have a translate tag where we have from Delta, which is 0% to another Delta to X Delta. We have the X and Y coordinates, 0%, while the Y, the wild data is 0% to the uh, wild data 100%. Also, this happens within the duration of 300, which is like 3 milliseconds. Okay. Uh, we have um, the activity slider, you know, just like the activity slider, you know, where we specify the X delta, but this time the Y delta is going to be from 100% to 0%, uh, where the duration is also clear, which is like three seconds. Okay, that's fine, you know, it's just basic. You can actually adjust this to the shape of the uh, window. Probably you want a smaller window, you want something by the side, you don't want to centerize. This is where you can actually make adjustments to the coordinates. All right, I'll go straight to our Java class. We have two Java classes here, the main activity and the pop-up main activity. The main activity is the UI, which you saw earlier, which is calling from the main.xml. All right, uh, let's quickly look at the main activity. Okay, we imported some stuff here, and the normal thing we used to, we the context, the intent, because it's going to ensue to another uh, activity, the view and also the button. Okay. Uh, we have a main activity that extends activity uh, and the public context you know, that's called when the activity is first created to set up all of the features. We have an uncreate method, you know, whereby we call on the start uncreate, save instance state, and we call on the context. So if the user is in the pop up main activity, you know, which is the second activity function, the setup window function will be called from that class. Otherwise, it would call the function from this class that has no implementation, all right? So you can actually place your setup window in the pop-up main activity. 
but otherwise aside that it's going to come from the main activity okay so you can actually set the content view to the layout of the main all right that's fine there's a set up button to get back to the uh, previous uh, activity again this we call either the function from this class or the pop-up main activity one depending on where the user is okay we have the setup window which is just empty for now all right okay so nothing here because we don't need to set up anything extra for the full app now, this is a basic uh, uh, uh floating window application so we have the setup button you know that's going to actually handle the intent now, it creates the button and defines the behavior for the full app so we have the button where we have the switch mode we're going to cast on the button to the id switch modes uh, in the switch mode we set the text switch to window and we set an on click listener to the particular button calling on the intent and also uh passing on to the main act uh, to the activity that you know we undo the intent which is pop-up main activity and we're going to add some flags you know, the flag activity to the new tag we stack the activity based on the window that is just a normal way of calling on to an intent so let's look at what the pop-up main activity will look like because that's where the floating window actually shows up okay uh we we actually imported uh the graphics point you know, because we imported the display the view the window and also the window manager all right this is uh, what uh, actually brought things about the floating window it extends main activity so that you can do as little work here as possible it will contain all the functions from the main activity so you can only have to override the one that should change the functionality if it is in the floating window yet it contains just the normal function from the activity but you need to override if you need that particular floating window to do something more or something extra all right so now we're overriding the the, fun, uh, the method you know from the main activity which is the setup window notice it here so we're going to create the layout for the window and the look of it you know so we call on the request window feature based on the feature action bar we set the window or uh, method to the flags and also the window manager to the flag dimension number behind okay the parameter for the window you can easily set the alpha and the dim behind the window from here and you can set you know, the placement of the window we have the window manager the layout params you get the window uh, method you get the it attributes so you set the alpha you no know, lower than one makes it more transparent okay the the the, the, the opacity of the of the uh, of the window okay you set the you, you set the dim amount you know set it higher if you want to dim behind the window okay okay you get this this is actually going to get the display size so that you can set the window to a percent of what you want you know the x and y coordinates how do you want it is it by the top is it by the far right is it by the left you know so you call on the display you get the window manager you get the default display now uh, you're going to instantiate the points class where you stay with the new points okay now the size is going to be passed as a parameter into the display by getting the size based on the integer width you know the size by the x coordinates and the height by the size of the y coordinates you, know. you could also easily use an integer value from the shared preferences to set the percentage you know if the height is bigger than width you get the window set the layout you know, based on the width multiplied by 0.9 0 0.9 and the integer by which is the height cast down to the height and you multiply it by 0.7 you can play around with this and see how the window is going to sit you know. or else if, you, if if the height is not greater than width okay you're going to get the window set the layout and also do some multiplication in the width by the 0.7 so it's going to be the opposite and the height is going to be 0 0.9, 0 0.8. You can play around with this. You know? I know we have another method with the setup button. You know, this is used to set up the button and what the outcome of pressing it will be. You know, this is an example of a way to make the app behave differently in the window from no matter how complex your main activity is, you can take bits and pieces and change them to another way to change items depending on if the user is in the windowed form or the full form would be set a boolean from its pop-up to true and set up window function the boolean should be defined as public or protected in the main activity so this is the important but we are going back to the uh, main window we find the button which is the switch mode 
set and uh, uh, find you call on the ID rather, which is the switch mode from the uh, TV in the main to text the mouse. So you set the text to be text and switch to full screen. You set the text. So you make it open to open the full app when you click the back button. Okay. So you set an on text now to the switch mode. Okay. Uh, this closes the current process. You will not actually have to do this if you wanted a part of your app just to come up on the top of your current activity. All right. So you, you, you call on the finish method. It starts the new regular main activity you know, called the intent back, you know, calling on the main activity class. And this particular class is very important. You add a flag to the full app, you know, based on the instantiation of the intent class. Okay. And also the flag activity new text, and you start the activity passing on the full app as a parameter. That's very, very straightforward. This is basic. You can extend more on this, you can work more on this, you, know, you can make it more robust. All right. With this few analysis, I believe you've been able to pick one of the things you've been able to understand it. I'm going to upload my source code to a GitHub account where you can pick it up from there, use it in the course of the application, use this for training purposes, get to understand floating board uh, windows, we have floating button, we have floating text, you know, we're still going to talk about floating text. I think I have floating body in my archives in uh, the Lara Studios channel. Uh, for one reason or the other, my journey motion is not uh, working this moment. But I've tested it in a uh, real device, it's working smoothly. You can also test it in any of your emulator or your real device and get it to play. Thank you very much for listening, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Have a wonderful day. Bye bye.